when we approach unmet needs in medicine, we, we solve one and we create another. Uh, CAR T cells have been a major advance in the therapy of patients with uh, refractory B cell malignancies. We uh, um, have had approval of two agents in the last two years. And as Dr. Schiller said, for a third of patients, it's been a success. I, we presented data earlier this year. We now have a four to five year follow up durable remissions following a CD19 directed CAR T cell therapy. However, the two-thirds of patients that don't respond to CAR T-cell therapy are now our new unmet need. So one challenge always leads to, to another challenge, and I suspect this is uh, um, the way it's going to be. In any event, mosinotuzumab is a bispecific antibody that binds to CD20 on uh, B cells and malignant B cells and uh, CD3 on uh, T cells. It, the, uh, in binding to the T cells, it's capable of inducing T cell activation and, uh, um, and when engaged with a B cell, it will cause uh, a death of the target cell and, and elimit, eliminate those cells. Uh, so uh, uh, the trial that I'm gonna be showing you data from is really a large uh, international trial uh, that is a schedule finding or schedule optimizing and dose finding study of this bispecific antibody, mosentuzumab, in patients with um, uh, relapsed refractory B cell uh, malignancies. Uh, so we've mentioned about the unmet need, uh, and, and you know, in terms of patient eligibility, as Dr. Schiller said, one of the problems with the CAR T cell approach is you, it can take. And, and three weeks to make the cells. It could take two weeks to get insurance approval before you can even do a phoresis, a week to schedule phoresis. That doesn't, a month or two months doesn't sound long, but it's an eternity when you have a patient with a very fast paced disease. So to be able to use the cellular uh, immunotherapeutic approach rapidly in patients that, uh, that need this approach because traditional immunochemotherapy is no longer working is, I, I think, a, a, a real, uh, a very important uh, um, aspect, and, and so an off-the-shelf product that has alternative B cell targets to CD19, which the approved CAR T cell products uh, um, address, is necessary. So uh, the cohort that, I'm, that our data come from are uh, uh, patients that have a step-up dosing in cycle one or an incremental day one, day eight, low dose followed by what's the maximum dose for that cohort. And there's a bunch of doses, but we see responses from the lowest throughout, so uh, I'll, I'll lump that together. Um, and there's some, a lot of good uh, science behind this at this meeting being presented in the poster sessions. Um, so the data that I'm gonna show you come from 270 patients on this arm that got step-up dosing, and there were uh, 30 patients uh, that had prior CAR T-cell therapy uh, uh, on this arm. Um, these are the inclusion criteria uh, on the uh, left, and th this, this would be a group of patients for whom CAR T cell therapy would be an appropriate approach, either commercially or on clinical trial. Um, and uh, we'll focus uh, overall on patients that, that have had other therapies, but particularly on those that have had prior CAR T cell therapy and do a comparison. 30 patients had it, 18 had more than three months of follow-up, and we can assess efficacy in that uh, smaller group. Most of these patients had either a large B cell lymphoma or large cell transformation of, of follicular. They're usually lumped together, and they're both within the label for CAR T cell uh, um, therapies. Um, you can see median of five prior therapies. I mean, the slide is uh, um, self-explanatory. Um, now, two unique uh, toxicities of cellular therapy that we learned during development of CAR T cell uh, therapy was cytokine release syndrome and what we call immune uh, cell um, associated neurologic uh, syndrome, which, or ICANS, neurologic adverse events. Manageable now, we understand it very well. Um, what's, uh, and we see this, these side effects, whether you, the cellular therapy is is a direct you know, a CAR T cell or whether it's an indirect cellular form of therapy like with a bispecific antibody approach. And if you look at the data in the two columns here, you can see that the safety for, with regard to cytokine release and neurologic adverse events are almost identical whether patients have had prior CAR T cell therapy or not. And what's interesting is that th these two 
adverse events are much more frequent in patients that have CAR T, uh, much more frequent during CAR T cell therapy. So we were concerned that perhaps we would, we would have a higher incidence in uh, these patients, but that wasn't seen. These are the, uh, um, that show you the changes in tumor diameters for patients with aggressive lymphomas. These are mostly uh, um, large B cell lymphomas or transformed uh, follicular to large B cell. And you could see, regardless, uh, I've, we've taken the colors out of the dosing cohorts because we have uh, um, you know, successes with the, at the lowest doses. In any event, you could see that uh, um, the negative side of the waterfall plot on the left of the right uh, side of the of the graph that there's a, a impressive number of responses there there's about a 40 percent response rate 20 percent complete response rate by anatomic criteria on the right you'll see the in the lymphomas and not surprisingly as always uh, they do twice as as good and we see an overall response rate of 60 percent and a complete response rate of about 40 percent um, what about the patients with prior CAR T cell therapy? Uh, there, most of these patients had um, diffuse large B cell or transformed, and we see the same 40% overall response, 20% complete response, albeit small number of patients. But what I think it's important is that, is that this is not a, an ongoing therapy forever. This is a dis therapy the patients receive until they're in remission, then it's discontinued. And uh, three quarters of the patients that are in complete remission in this study are remaining complete remission off, off of, uh, uh, or three quarters of the remission patients uh, are, are off therapy and and uh, being followed. The uh, this is a case of a patient of mine um, who who had prior CAR T cell therapy and. Um, at about 12 months had progression of disease. Uh, we tried to stabilize her with a number of different um, approaches. Nothing was working. Um, she was eligible for this study, the dark uh, uh, material in the lower part of the scan is her tumor. And as you can see, she achieved uh, after the third cycle of mosatuzumab. And she was mosatuzumab. She was in one of the lower dose cohorts, I, um, uh, a complete remission. She's been off therapy for uh, between eight and nine months now and remains in in complete remission. Um, also, there uh, patients have, in this study, four patients have been retreated. So they've been off therapy, actually relapsed, and uh, three out of four of them responded to retreatment. One so far is a complete response. That case is shown on the slide. You can see this patient was under very, initially on a very low dose of the drug um, in terms of, uh, uh, she was part of a dose finding study, and uh, uh, had a complete response, and then you can see um, she remained in response off therapy for 16 months, had a recurrence, uh, low tumor volume recurrence um, at that time, was retreated again at a low dose, and you could see that uh, she's in remission now uh, and for 13 months with an ongoing response. So, and this ability to retreat is something that we've not been successfully able to do with the CD19 directed CAR T cell therapies. We've uh, um, it, uh, so that's another um, uh, finding that I, I think is gratifying. In any event, I think this uh, as a single agent, which is what I've showed you, it has a really promising um, uh, efficacy uh, a potential, and the risk is def uh, um, the risks are definitely acceptable vis-a-vis -vis CAR T cell therapy. We have seen complete responses in those with prior CAR T cell therapy and in those uh, um, who have not had CAR T-cell therapy. I should mention here that, that I've actually used this drug as a bridge to CAR T-cell therapy in patients so, uh, who have a fast-paced disease, and, and uh, I'll, I'll describe some of that uh, in the presentation uh, uh, tomorrow. In any event, uh, I'll stop here and say that I think that there's lots of studies going on, and I think the future for this drug and this approach, so off-the-shelf approach to exploiting cellular therapy is is uh, the direction that uh, uh, we'll be pursuing in the future.